Hi, this is Regina Davis, NARUC's Director of Communications, and I'm joined today by Enrico Vialli. And Enrico is the head of NL North America. Now, NL is a new sponsor for NARUC, and we're so pleased that you are supporting NARUC Summer Policy Summit. But let's start um, with the first question, and that is, just tell us who is uh, NL, and uh, can you describe some of the work that you're doing in the U.S.? Regina, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Yes, uh, with pleasure. I will try to describe uh, what NL is and what we are doing uh, in the uh, United States and North America in general. NL is a multinational uh, uh, energy company which is engaged uh, in power, but we are also an integrated player not only in the power markets, but also in the gas uh, and especially in the renewable markets. We are the largest European utility if measured by EBITDA and we are present in over 30 countries uh, worldwide. We are present uh, in generation with uh, more than 88 gigawatt of installed capacity. Probably even more interesting is to understand that more than half of that capacity comes from renewable resources. Okay. In which we are probably the largest developer, owner and operator private in renewable energy in the world. Other important sector in which we are engaged is we distribute energy, electricity, through a network in different countries, which has a total length of more than 2.2 million kilometers. And we distribute power to over 74 million customers, which are both industrial, commercial, but household, which are connected to our network. We also are engaged uh, since few years uh, in uh, another field, which is the field of services in which we are energy services. We are engaged with a global business line, which is uh, called NLX, in which we uh, develop and uh, deploy innovative products and digital solutions and services for our customers in the areas, example, of electric mobility, in the areas of smart cities, industries, and also home. Uh, in this field, we have over 100,000 public and private uh, electric vehicle charging points, just to give you some, uh, some metrics, and over six gigawatt of demand response worldwide. Now, coming to United States, United States, uh, this year we celebrate uh, 20 years of presence in the United States. Congratulations on that milestone. Yes, it's an important year for us. And we are present with some of our businesses. We are present, uh, first of all, with, with power generation, in which uh, we are a developer, owner, and operate a fleet of renewable energy plants in 18 states in the United States and in one province in Canada, with some 71 plants for a total of 6 gigawatt of wind, which is the largest technology we have here, solar, geothermal, very smaller, but very, very interesting, and an hydro. We are also present uh, with NLX in the services uh, with uh, serving more than 4,500 business customers in over 35,000 sites. And this uh, is for DR, demand response, uh, which uh, we have uh, an installed uh, capacity which we are managing uh, for our customer of over 4.7 gigawatt. We also are present in battery storage. We have more than 70 projects under management construction here in the United States. 
and in private uh, charging points with more than 70,000 charging points which have been uh, delivered to this, uh, to this market. Wow, that's, that's pretty impressive. Now, uh, before I, I jump to, to my next area of questions, I just want to go back to something you said about all the states that you're uh, present in the United States. So are there plans for expansion into other states? Well, there are always uh, curiosity and willingness uh, to expand uh, in, our, in our states. We are very present in the Midwest with our generation capacity in the mm -hmm. East and in California. Hopefully we will be able to expand our presence in the future. So with everything that's going on, what, uh, what's the biggest trend that you're seeing right now uh, in the energy space? Well, the biggest trend that we see in the energy space uh, worldwide uh, start with the energy transition. Energy transition, a different way in which we produce the energy than traditionally and deliver energy and services to our customer. This is mainly driven by a growth, which is very, very big worldwide uh, in uh, renewable, which is progressively substituting, uh, first of all, coal fire power plants, but also carbon driven uh, power plants uh, in, in general. And this is due, uh, this energy transition is, is very clearly linked uh, to climate change on one side, but it's also driven by progress in technology, which are making the renewable energy more and more cost competitive. Another driver in the energy transition are the choices of our customers and customers, but also corporate customers that more and more demand this type of sustainable energy for their own use or for being put in the products that they send, sell to, to their customers. So, Energy transition is probably the biggest trend uh, that we see. Another trend is the digitalization. And digitalization together with energy transition, also in all the grid business, the distribution business, because we need to have grids more and more mm -hmm. that are vehicling and using decarbonized power. So the, the way the power is managed, and the resiliency that we have to put into the grid is also a very important trend that we see. We are very lucky in our sector also to see a third trend, which is very important for us. And I believe also for uh, the sustainability of our business, which is electrification. The use of electricity, example, in, in transportation, in industry, which before, we're using another, another mean. These together with uh, all the changes and all the new technology, the, the opportunity that the new technology are, are giving us uh, are really driving uh, our market and our way of working in that market. So with all that you've said, can you share with us uh, the role of the, of the regulator in in this significant transition as you've described it? It's a fundamental role. Most, uh, a large part of our business is, uh, is regulated. And therefore the role of regulators uh, and also policy and legislator policy makers uh, is absolutely uh, basilar. In set the policy direction, but not only the direction, is also in setting the pace of change. Okay. And this in order to promote, favor, decarbonized uh, metrics of production, modern, uh, not only production, but uh, distribution uh, systems. So for an energy which is more modern, reliable, clearly it has to be affordable. Right. Also energy, it's a very important component which can be managed by applying new technology 
and therefore giving us a much more resilient system. So the regulators are the basis of all of this happening and happening fast for the benefit of our customers. So we've talked about the role of the regulator. So how do utilities uh, factor into this uh, energy structure? Well, the utilities are clearly having a role of a protagonist in this, in this structure. There are utilities which are vertically integrated, which means they have generation, they have wires, they have pipes, and even most important, they have customers, <laughs> which they provide with a very basic uh, service. Sometimes we refer to commodity, it's a service. Right. Other utilities are focusing on, on some of the, of the value chain that I described. So the utilities have an important role in adopting the new technology, supporting the existing infrastructure, because we have a lot of infrastructure and assets, so which can be enhanced and used better with new technology. In some cases, they have to be replaced. They have to be replaced, especially my, my mention is that the renewable technology replacing some more aged way of producing and carbon-based technology sometimes defer also the investments. But all of these, while providing the customers with the energy they need, with the metrics of energy they are demanding, especially in a sustainable way, and with the new services and choices that they are asking. Okay, so wow. Problem. Now, now let's get to something that's uh, on the minds of many people right now, and that's COVID-19. So how can the energy transition help with the recovery from COVID-19 because hopefully we'll be uh, on the road to recovery soon. And what role will the energy transition help with this recovery? Uh, quite important. Uh, before answering your question, I would like to start on how utilities and our field is reacting in this uh, uh, and acting in this situation of uh, pandemic of COVID-19. Sure. Very happy to say that I believe most of the utilities have embraced all the caution and all the ways in order to continue providing safely their services, which more and more are needed. We are all at exactly. home, we need energy, and we need to maintain our investments and our grid with safety. So far, uh, our sector has been able to answer to this, uh, which was the first challenge. If we look more at the future, I think uh, uh, energy transition could contribute uh, uh, very much uh, to the economic pickup after, after this, uh, let's say, period of standstill that we had in our economic growth and in certain cases, unfortunately, also of going back. Why is that? We are in, in our field, the utilities and the energy field, a major employer. United States uh, utilities, if I recall correctly, are employing more than 3.5 million people. And we can give, of course, stability uh, to, these, uh, to these colleagues and these people which are working in, in this field. But more, the energy transition implies new investments. So we are operator owners and developers of very important assets with a lot of investment. And this is very important for a reliable job creation. I think the investment that the energy transition is, uh, is, uh, is giving the opportunity to be deployed, the fact that they are stable and they give a lot of uh, stable advantages 
is a driver of growth in, in, uh, in jobs, helping therefore the economy and uh, all the community to recover from the heat that we are having in this moment. Okay, well, thank you. Is there anything else uh, that we didn't cover that you'd like to, to add? No, I would like to give all the wishes uh, for a very productive uh, meeting that you have uh, ongoing. Uh, of course, we have been working with regulator internationally and a lot in, uh, in North America and United States too. I believe uh, that the uh, NAROC uh, Summer Policy Summit uh, is, I know, it's a very important event. Uh, in which the issues are discussed, ideas are put uh, together, and this very important dialogue uh, is, uh, is uh, continuing and kicking off. So all the best uh, for everything that you are doing, uh, and uh, we look forward uh, to maintain the dialogue and uh, learn together. Well, thank you so much. And again, thank you so much to uh, NL for being a sponsor of our Summer Policy Summit, our very first virtual policy summit. And we look forward to uh, engaging with you more in the future. And thank you so much for your uh, candid responses and you have contributed greatly to this conversation. Thank you again, uh, uh, Enrico. I look forward to chatting with you again soon. Gina, thank you and looking forward.